Farming games can get boring. All right, I said it. I love farming games. You love farming games. We love cozy games. But it, you kind of get into this routine. And although I do like routine in video games, that's part of the appeal. Sometimes I want more. Sometimes I want my cozy games to just offer more. Different kinds of gameplay, different story elements, different like battling, give me something. Well, today I, along with a guest, uh, are going to talk about six games you should check out that aren't just farming games. They offer a little bit more. Six unique games. Pat, what did you make the title? Six unique farming games to play on Switch. Maybe I'll use that one. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get going. Miss Bubbles, what do you got for us? Hello, hello, it's Miss Bubbles, and I'm so excited to be here with Pat today talking about farming game hybrids that are really fun to play. I feel like farming games can be a little bit boring because a lot of the mechanics and the gameplay loops that they implement feel repetitive, they feel tedious, and you feel like every game is just the same, but it's just in a new skin. So I made sure that my picks today are ones that are quirky, they're entertaining, and they're unique in their own way, and they definitely deserve a spot in your gaming library. And if you love everything cozy games and RPGs, make sure to check out my channel, you're not gonna be disappointed. So my first game is one that I've been trying to manifest a sequel for it for the longest time, so every collab that you see me in, if I have a chance to talk about it i try to mention it so hey maybe we can now manifest it together i'm talking about dragon quest builders 2 this is such an underrated hybrid game with elements of farming mining crafting building and more i prefer this entry to the first one if you played both let me know which one you like but i feel like dragon quest builders 2 brings on a lot more valuable quality of life additions that the first one lacked basically you go from island to island to start a new story chapter and you slowly find yourself invested in the characters but also the home that you build in each place you visit. As you rank up and gain more blueprints, you can bring them to a bigger base that is always yours, no matter what stage of the story you're in. And you can even have friends over so you build to your heart's content together. Combat here is rather simple with enemies repeating the type of attack animation they use so it's very easy for you to remember. There's an element of charm that Dragon Quest Builders 2 brings to the table that I just haven't seen any other game manage to replicate it and it's really hard to explain you have to play it to understand what I'm saying. From the ambiance to different biomes, music, sound effects, the story and the gameplay loop it's gonna hook you and you're gonna see yourself playing this game for months on end not being able to put it down or play anything else. The world is pretty big so you can run, climb, glide and swim your way from place to place and I love how the tutorial slowly introduces you to the new mechanics. I would say Dragon Quest Builders 2 is for intermediate players. Beginners can feel overwhelmed with the more complex recipes and pretty much the chapters that you progress to. I played this on the Nintendo Switch for the longest time I had a blast and I also restarted a new playthrough recently on PlayStation. And the thing is, let me know what you think about this, but it's a game that I refuse to finish. I am someone who gets very attached to games that I play and with Dragon Quest Builders 2, I just don't want that journey to end yet. So let me know if there was any game that you played before that you felt like, you know what, I just don't want the journey to end. I'm just gonna put it on the side for now. So I'm at chapter 8 with the game. I think I have like three more chapters. I just decided, you know, like, put it on the side, wait until Square Enix announces Dragon Quest Builders 3, and then I'll go back to it. So I want to know if you've ever had a game do that to you as well. Now, the first game I want to talk about is called Silent Hope. I feel like this one gets so slept on by people. This game is put out by Marvelous, who also does the Rune Factory and Story of Seasons games. This is a more traditional dungeon crawler hack and slash game. Now, the reason why I wanted to put it on here is because it does have some farming slash RPG elements to it, but I don't think that's sort of the main gimmick of the game. Like I said, this is a hack and slash dungeon crawler where you play as not only one character, but you can choose from up to seven different characters that all play very differently and have their own set of skills. Now, because Marvelous uh, has put this out, they have put little nods to their other games, like you will see Woolies from Rune Factory, and you will see the cute little cows from Story of Seasons. Now, where's the farming at? Why is it even in this video? 
Well, this game kind of plays in two different parts. The first part are your dungeons where you'll be facing monsters and trying not to die while getting a ton of loot. The other part, you actually have this little hub world where you will do things like crafting, farming, and even ranching in this game. Now, it's kind of like it's there, but it's not as in-depth as other farming games because even the farming mechanics in this game play out in a series of menus. So even though you will be technically farming, you won't do the actions of farming, if that makes sense. I still wanted to include this game because if you are fans of those other series, I think you will appreciate the little nods and the gameplay in this one is just so good. It's so addicting to just, you know, have that one more run in dungeons while collecting a ton of treasure, then coming back up into the hub world and slowly upgrading your character by crafting and cooking. This one is super fun, and if you like combat in these sort of cozy games, Silent Hope's a great pick. My second pick is a controversial one, and it's because the performance that it had on the Nintendo Switch was not the best, but also the fan base of the franchise prefers the first, second, third, or maybe even fourth entry, but I'm here to disagree and say that the fifth entry is the best, and the one that I'm talking about is Rune Factory 5. This was such an amazing game, and it released at a time that I needed it as a gamer, but also as a human being. My country was going through a revolution at the time, and what happened is is that we had endless power cuts. Because I was playing the game on the Nintendo Switch, it meant that I can charge it up at night, whenever the power is on, and then I can play it and enjoy it for myself. It just came at the right time and made this game hold such a precious place in my heart. As soon as I played more of it, it quickly replaced the love that I had for Rune Factory 4, and I saw how flawed the fourth entry was. In 5, the systems are a lot simpler, and you don't feel like you need to stare at a wiki 24-7 to learn how to progress each relationship relationship or to do X, Y, and Z. The game does a great job at introducing you to the game mechanics, and here you are playing as an amnesiac, either a boy or a girl, and now you're volunteering as part of the seed organization, and you're gonna be helping them on some bounty hunting. Monster taming is a core feature in the franchise. As you traverse the world, you find monsters to fight, but you can also tame them to use their help on the ranch. Or if you want to, you can ride them to make traversal easier. The cast of characters is very cute, and I was invested and getting to know everyone. I also like the town that you're based in. As for your home, you can decorate it to a limited extent, and then you can work on your skills from mining, cooking, farming, and foraging, to even sleeping and walking. Rune Factory 5 has a lot to offer, not only in the amount of gameplay content that it brings to the table, but also just the story overall and the characters. They're all unique, they're all quirky, and I really had a fun time getting to know each one, and it really makes me want to go back to the game and start a new playthrough. The Nintendo Switch performance has plenty of issues, but as someone who suffers from motion sickness and migraines, I still had a great time with it and it never triggered a migraine session or a migraine cycle for me, so I feel like I was able to play it despite all of the flaws that it has on the Nintendo Switch. But if you played it on PC and you feel like the experience there is better, definitely let us know. Next up is slowly becoming one of my favorites, and that is Slime Rancher. Now, Slime Rancher has been out for a little bit now, but it uh, is kind of new-ish to the Switch, not really, but uh, it's a good port if you're wondering about performance. Now, Slime Rancher, as in the name, focuses a lot more on ranching rather than farming, but there are farming elements in this game. But at its core, Slime Rancher is a ranching game that you will ranch these little cute blobs. Now, this game does play out in first person, and I know a lot of people are kind of sensitive and get motion sickness to the first person, but there are sensitivity options in the game. So if you're worried about that, it never affected me, and I, I am someone that kind of gets a little woozy when I play shooting games sometimes, but this one's pretty good. Now, like I said, you will catch different slimes that are in the world. I wouldn't say it's an open world, but it's like, it has like open sections but it's not like a true open world. But this game is so cute and so enjoyable. And it's one of those games where you just kind of like start playing and then all of a sudden four hours have went by, you know, you know, those kind of games. And at its core, it seems like a pretty simple ranching game, but you can do a lot of advanced things in this, like uh, slime breeding. And there's also this really cool mechanic where 
uh, so you, as you take care of your slimes, they will actually poop and you use that poop as currency. Uh, but you just don't sell the poop anytime you want. There's actually a stock market system. So some days, some, uh, slime poop will be worth more. And then other days it won't be a, this is sounding crazy, but you know, it's just like a unique part of the game. But yeah, if you were interested in games that are more ranching based, which I feel like we need a lot more of, Slime Rancher is uh, is a great pick. There's farming too, where you can like grow things and, and feed them to your slimes, but it's about the slimes, okay? This one's a good one. The next pick that I have is one that has a very particular audience in mind. If you like dark humor, grim story, something that is like a farming game with a big twist, then this would be the one for you. This is Graveyard Keeper. I feel like in the beginning, the game got a lot of attention, but as years have gone by, less and less people know about it. So anyone who's new to the farming games genre is not familiar with it. And I think it's for a good reason because this one is more for advanced players anyways. But the game doesn't take itself too seriously whatsoever. And if you love dark humor, again, this is perfect for you. You're gonna find yourself talking to a skull and a donkey and then you're dealing with bodies because your farm is gonna include dead bodies in some plots and then vegetables in others. And the reason why I say this is an advanced game is because the technology skill is very complicated. If you played the game Bandle Tale that recently released by the same developers, you could see that it is a bit of a complex tree. In Graveyard Keeper, the devs take it to a whole new level and the blueprints to unlock are very difficult to get to. So the system works by gathering red, blue, and green points, which designate handcrafting skills, spiritual knowledge, and general knowledge. So this game is all about being intentional and you may need to carry a wiki around to figure out what to do next. I usually don't like to be attached to a wiki when I'm playing a game. I just want to play the game and enjoy it at my own pace. But if the game is worth it, like Graveyard Keeper is, it's definitely worth the investment and it's worth actually carrying a wiki for. The ethical dilemmas and some of the scenarios that you're put in will make you scratch your head. It is very grim at times. You're gonna face some weird things happening here and there. But despite all of that, this is such a fun game that you have to add to your collection, especially if you're looking for the next farming game that's a bit more advanced and a bit more challenging. Anytime I can talk about Moonstone Island, I will. Moonstone Island is such a great example of a game that doesn't stick to one sort of play style, and I really appreciate that without it being overwhelming. Now, if you didn't know what Moonstone Island is, it is essentially a monster collecting game that has sort of a lot going on. It has farming, fishing, gathering, uh, relationship stuff, but it also has a big emphasis on card-based battling and, like I said, monster collecting. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds, and I love this one so much because every time I play it, I feel like I not only always have something to do, but I don't get bored doing it. Now, admittingly, the farming in this game is pretty basic. However, there are seasonal crops that you can get. So, you know, the crops that you can grow in the summer aren't gonna be the same ones that you can grow in the winter. Uh, spoiler alert, you can't grow anything in the winter unless you got a greenhouse. But the crops aren't used for just selling. You can craft with them. You can now cook with them per the recent update. Uh, you can even make potions with them and just feed them to your monsters, power them up. It's pretty good. Also, the cool thing about this game is that it's constantly getting updates. The devs have uh, a roadmap of updates that this game is going to follow. It runs great on the Switch. And yeah, if you don't have this one, go get it. It's pretty good. Thank you so much, Pat, for having me at Nintendo Talk. I love Nintendo. I love your channel. I've been following you for such a long time, even before I started my own channel. To be able to be here and share my picks for farming games with you is awesome. So thank you so much for the opportunity. And I hope to see you in the next one, which you actually are, because part two is over on there. So I hope to see you. Until next time. So there you have it. Those are six unique farming games you should definitely check out. I uh, want to give a huge thanks to Ms. Bubbles for joining me on this video. If you haven't checked out her channel, do so. It's more of the same. It's more cozy stuff. Although she kind of dips into like RPG stuff. So yeah, if you are bored of farming games or the games I'm covering, go check her out. We also did another part on her channel where we talk about this same subject, but six more games. So if you want to check out even more games like this, check out the pinned link in the comments.
and in the description, I guess. Thank you again, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everyone.